the scarlet letter a romance this is what we shall study in today's capsule summary hello this is heena from team walat how are you well this classic american novel was written by nathaniel hawthorne you can look at him on the screen he lived from 1804 to 1864 and this novel of his the scarlet letter was published in the year 1850 The genre is romance and historical fiction and the setting is Salem, Boston, Massachusetts, USA. Year of action is 17th century, basically 1642 to 1649. And the narrator is a person or as you know an unnamed narrator who worked at Salem Custom House. Okay, now listen to first how the scarlet letter begins. The Scarlet Letter begins with an introduction by an unnamed narrator who explains why he has written this story called The Scarlet Letter. What is the explanation? While working at the Salem Custom House, which is a tax collection agency, the narrator discovers a patch of cloth. On this cloth, an embroidered beautifully letter A is written in bright red color. Okay, so in bright red color there's an embroidery of A and on the outline the outline is with a golden thread okay and as you know bright red means scarlet that is how the scarlet letter which means bright red letter which letter letter a so working at this house this unnamed narrator discovers a patch of cloth on which a scarlet letter a is written and along with this scarlet letter a the narrator also discovers a manuscript okay so when he is going through the manuscript he finds that this manuscript was written by the past surveyor and it details a story of 200 years ago in the puritan north england north england you know is a region in usa so after the narrator lost his job he thought that why not develop this manuscript into a story so then the birth of the scarlet letter happened so let's start with the novel now in boston during the 17th century people followed puritanism you know it puritanism is a religious sect of protestantism puritans believe in strict physical punishments and consider pleasurable activities such as drinking and dancing sinful here theme of puritanism is discussed as you can see Now the novel begins with the protagonist who's called Hester Prin who emerges out of a prison so imagine this is a prison and a lady a girl is emerging out of the prison her name is Hester Prin look at how prin rhymes with sin okay there is a connection how now Hester Prin is carrying a baby in her arms this baby is her daughter the name of the daughter is Pearl she's only 3 months old The two are forced by the religious officials to climb up a scaffold to suffer public shame for Hester's skin sin. You know what is a scaffold, right? It is a raised wooden platform, a raised wooden platform. You can call it a stage, okay, a center stage around which a crowd is gathered. Hester is forced to climb up this scaffold with the daughter in her hands, and here, you know, she is made to suffer publicly for her sin. as you know theme of historical tradition that how people were made to suffer or how they were punished in the olden days this is discussed but what is she getting punished for what is hester's sin the sin is her baby pearl is born out of wedlock she is not married okay here and uh, there's a baby moreover she has refused to expose the name of the lover the people around her say Who is the father of this daughter? Who is the father of this girl? But Hester does not speak a word. She's mum. To remind her of her guilt, she has been, you know, told to wear this scarlet letter on her chest. Now look at, you know, the irony. This is a punishable thing, the letter A. But the way she comes out with that letter A, it looks so fanciful. Okay? We don't understand the meaning. This letter A, which is, you know, carved on that embroidered cloth and she's wearing it it looks fanciful but in reality it is to tell her of her guilt that she's an adulteress she's committed a crime now while on the scaffold in front of a large crowd hester is shocked to see someone to see whom her long lost husband now listen to the husband's name her husband roger chillingworth had sent hester to new england few years back 
while he stayed back in Europe. He had told, you know, Hester that I will come, but then he did not. And it was presumed that her husband was dead. Chillingworth was dead. And behind, you know, all this, she had an affair with an unnamed man. We don't know. And she has given birth to a daughter called Pearl. Easy till here? Easy. When Chillingworth hears all this, you know, that she's my wife. She's standing there with a daughter who's not mine. Chillingworth vows to discover his wife's lover and take his revenge against the sinner. After this, Hester is returned to the prison. Okay. Three years pass. Hester is freed from the prison, but she must confine herself to the outskirts of Boston near the forest as an outcast. She has committed adultery. She's an adulteress. She's guilty. She's sinful. She cannot live with the people in Boston. So she lives close to the forest. Okay. But, you know, she's very capable. She excels at the art of sewing. Sewing, suidhaga, she sews. So she makes her living as a seamstress, though her employees, employers hate her, they despise her, but they take her service. Imagine, look at the social hypocrisy. They are taking service from a person they despise. I am taking service from a person I hate. Anti I a hypocrite? Yes, that is what is shown here. That again is a theme. Now listen to Pearl, the daughter. Pearl grows up as a rebellious and mischievous child. For instance... She associates herself with occult practitioners like Mistress Hibbins, okay? So Mistress Hibbins lives around the forest. She talks about, you know, evil whom she calls black man. She does occult practices, witch practice. And literally, Pearl loves all this. Pearl is fascinated by what Mistress Hibbins does. But Hester is not, okay? But yet, yet, yet. Pearl is a loving companion of her mother, Hester. Now, people argue that Pearl must be sent away to be raised in a noble family and not by a woman like Hester. To plead against this order, Hester one day goes to meet the governor of the town. What is the name of this governor? Governor Bellingham. Now, Governor Bellingham is a very hypocrite man, okay? In Puritan society, you know it. Luxury is not allowed. But this Governor Bellingham, he loves luxury, he is a very luxurious man and amorous also, let me tell you. Now, in his house at this time when Hester has come to plead that don't send away Pearl, Governor Bellingham is sitting with a man called Arthur Dimsdale. Arthur Dimsdale and another Chillingworth. Chillingworth, you know, is Hester's husband. Why is Chillingworth there? You must be thinking. Chillingworth has become a physician in Boston, which means he's treating patients. He's become a doctor. He's, you know, told this lie to people in Boston that I'm a man from Europe. I have studied this, this, you know, study in Europe and I'm a physician, but he's not. So Chillingworth, who is practicing as a physician, is there with Governor Bellingham. Are the Dimsdale, a very reverent person who delivers ser sermons. He's a member of the clergy. He's also there. And there's another man, Mr. Wilson. So here, the good Mr. Wilson asks Pearl who made her. You know, in questioning, they are questioning Pearl just to see is Pearl being raised nicely by Hester? So Mr. Wilson asks Pearl, who made you? He expects that a Puritan child will answer, God, God made me. But this mischievous and impish Pearl answers that she was not made, but she was plugged off a rose bush. On the insistence of Arthur Dimsdale, though, Pearl is allowed to stay with her mother. And here, Chillingworth feels something suspicious. He thinks, why is Arthur Dimsdale forcing so much that, you know, Pearl should stay with Hester? No, why is he doing all this? Is there some connection with between this Arthur Dimsdale and my wife? But he's not sure yet. Now, listen to Arthur Dimsdale, you know life. He's a respected member of the clergy, but his health is feeble. He walks always with a hand on his chest. He has an ailment of the heart. For his better treatment, Chillingworth, the presumed doctor or physician, moves in with him. He says that if I'll be with you round the clock, I'll take good care of you and your health will, you know, it will become better. But staying with him, the suspicion of Chillingworth grows. And one day, while Dimsdale is asleep, Chillingworth discovers, you know, that, you know, the shirt is open. And Chillingworth discovers a carved mark over his heart. Imagine he has carved something like, you know, it is the blood clot, you can say. He has carved something 
on his chest. And that is exactly the same like Hester's scarlet letter, which she wears, the embroidered. So, you know, Dimsdale has carved A on his chest just the same way Hester has this embroidered A as a pendant. Dimsdale had been punishing himself. Listen to the reality. Dimsdale had been punishing himself for the sin he has committed. He fasts, he whips himself, but he's selfish enough not to commit his crime in public. Okay, he is hitting himself. He's punishing himself, but he's not going out in the crowd to confess his sins. What is his sin? He has committed the crime. He is the lover of Hester. Chillingworth's suspicion turns into surety. Dimsdale is Hester's lover. Dimsdale is his wife's lover. Chillingworth vows to take his revenge. He treats Dimsdale with cruelty, harassing him, because of which his health deteriorates further, along with his emotional health, which has been deteriorating. One night, Hester spots Dimsdale on the same scaffold. She was made to stand for her sins. Hester is shocked to see Dimsdale there. Dimsdale, her lover, whom she has not met, whom she's never spoken to, after, you know, all these years. Dimsdale looks terrible. He's laughing strangely, muttering to himself, talking to himself. Hester decides to help him. She goes and pleads with Chillingworth to stop tormenting Dimsdale. And after this, she arranges for a secret meeting with Dimsdale in the forest. Imagine a girl of what, 17th century, arranging for a secret meeting to help the man. Here, the theme of female ind independence, individuality is discussed. Now, very important scene in the novel is the forest scene. In forest, there is Hester, her daughter Pearl, and Arthur Dimsdale. After revealing Chillingworth's true identity as her husband, Hester convinces Dimsdale to flee with her and Pearl to Europe to start a new life. She tells Dimsdale that life is not as bad as we think. Come on, let's leave Boston. Let's go to free Europe. There, nobody will treat us like this. We can go there. Dimsdale agrees. He's happy. They make plans to take a ship the day after Dimsdale is scheduled to deliver an important sermon. Because of this, Hester is happy after so many years. She opens her hair, you know, otherwise they're always closed. They're always braided, locked. She opens her hair loose. She removes the letter A from, you know, her neck. Pearl cannot recognize her mother like this. She's always seen her mother with hair closed. She's seen her mother with a letter. She's like, Mama, no, don't remove that letter A from your chest. Wear it again. Wear it again. Can you imagine? The next day, Dimsdale delivers the best sermon of his life. However, he realizes Listen to the unfortunate scene. He realizes that he's dying. I told you his health is feeble, heart ailment. He realizes he cannot make it to Europe. Picking up the courage, what does he do at last, at the last day of his life, on the last day? He wishes to commit his sin. So he mounts the scaffold, asks Hester and Pearl to join him. At last, he confesses his sins in front of the crowd, bears his chest, reveals the scarlet letter carved into his own skin. And then he dies peacefully. As Pearl kisses him for the first time, he dies in Hester's lap. How does the novel end? First, Chillingworth dies miserable a year after Dimsdale. He leaves his small inheritance for Pearl. Second, Hester and Pearl leave for Europe, where Pearl grows up into a fine lady and marries into an aristocratic European family. Third, after many years, Hester returns to Europe. She still wears the letter A. She, it, she does not mind. She has grown up with that letter. She does not mind wearing it. She does not mind calling herself an adulteress. She's not. She loved, Hester, you know, Dimsdale. She had Pearl out of love, not out of sin. So she still wears the letter A and she continues with her charitable acts. You know, she was a very charitable person. She helped people wherever she found them in trouble. So she continued with these acts. After her death, she is buried alongside Dimsdale and their shared tombstone bears the letter A. Or on a field sable, the letter A gules or gulls. And we are done with the Scarlet Letter of Romance. Did you like it? I liked it. Thank you so much. This is Hina from Team Wallet. Take good care of yourself. Bye-bye.